What is an SLP's role in reflux management? Acid reflux and GERD or LPRD. Acid reflux involves the retrograde flow of stomach acid back up into the esophagus and sometimes back into the throat. There are two types of acid reflux. GERD, which stands for gastroesophageal reflux disease. This is where stomach contents affect the esophagus. LPR stands for laryngopharyngeal reflux. This is where stomach contents affect the throat. Symptoms of GERD include heartburn and regurgitation, and symptoms of LPR include hoarseness, frequent throat clearing, chronic cough, and difficulty swallowing. And this is usually when we get involved. People can aspirate their reflux, leading to a potential aspiration pneumonitis. But this isn't a result of dysphagia. So what role could SLPs possibly have in reflux management? Why would we get involved if they swallow just fine? I'm going to cover three roles we should be aware of when it comes to this common condition. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Number one, identification. SLPs can help identify the symptoms and presence of potential esophageal dysfunction, including reflux. Symptoms might include globus sensation, increased difficulty with solids, feeling full quickly, frequent throat clearing after meals. Some might describe heartburn, but that's not always the case. Unfortunately, many people think that if they don't feel burning pain, they don't have acid reflux. Lastly, increased coughing at night while lying in bed. This is an important role because we could be the first to catch an underlying cause to related swallowing symptoms and make the appropriate referral for reflux management. This is also important because catching GERD early can help prevent worsening symptoms and worst case scenario, the development of Barrett's esophagus, which is a pre-cancerous condition. Point number two, instrumental assessments and screeners. SLPs can assist with identifying things by administering patient-reported measures like the Reflux Symptom Index or the RSI. It's a nine-item questionnaire that documents the symptoms of patients with reflux. SLPs often use the Reflux Finding Score when performing fees, which rates the presence or absence or severity of subglottic edema, ventricular obliteration, erythema, vocal cord edema, diffuse laryngeal edema, posterior commissure hypertrophy, granuloma, or thick endolaryngeal mucus. Modified barium swallow study. This allows for real-time visualization of pharyngeal, laryngeal, and upper third portion of the esophagus. We can observe reflux from the upper esophageal sphincter if it happens during the study. Radiologists can also perform an esophageal sweep to screen for any blatant esophageal abnormalities. This all matters because it gives us data beyond identifying symptoms and patient complaints. We can now back those complaints up with more objective measures and direct visualization, further promoting improved and prompt referrals and plan of care. This can also help us better guide our recommendations related to any potential dysphagia symptoms if we know the patient may receive medications or other interventions that could directly impact their swallowing symptoms. Acid reflux effect on the vocal folds. Sometimes acid reflux can cause inflammation to the vocal folds if the acidic material is aspirated frequently. We might see this on fees or nasoendoscopic evaluation of the larynx if you specialize in voice. This also improves referrals to ENT and voice specialists if needed. Many of the patients I saw in skilled nursing had similar complaints. I clear my throat all the time. I feel like I have a lump in my throat and even thrush-like coating on the back of their tongue. Because they appeared functional, often they got passed over for treatment, but on further examination, they were patients that in reality had GERD or LPR, and their dysphagia was a result of uncontrolled reflux. When I got to do a fees on these patients, they presented with erythema or bright red tissue that was often edematous or swollen and even macerated from constant bathing with what the MDs would later diagnose as refluxed contents. They also tended to have bad breath that embarrassed them and that white coating just visible at bedside extended down their lingual base into the vollecula. Now, just a few words about treatment. 
Many of these patients will require pharmacological intervention, but we are not doctors or pharmacists. It's not up to us to choose. There's many H2 blockers and PPIs on the market that have shown remarkable improvements, but they can also have severe side effects. So please encourage your patient to follow up with their doctor to decide on the best course of treatment for them given their medical history. Are you enjoying this video? If so, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of my new videos that I'll be posting weekly on topics just like this, dedicated to you, the medical SLP. Number three, patient education. After we identify and confirm suspicions for reflux with the appropriate referrals now in place, we need to educate. Provide a patient handout on dietary changes and behavioral modifications. Discuss the types of food that can cause or worsen reflux, like spicy foods, acidic foods, citrus, and spearmint. Also refer them to Dr. Jonathan Aviv's books. He's an ENT who has written extensively about dietary changes to improve LPR. Also discuss the drinks that can exacerbate the issues like coffee, caffeine, and alcohol. Don't just focus on what to avoid, but SLPs can also provide a list of food and liquids to add to their diet. No one wants to go home with just a list of restrictions. Providing a list of ideas for behavioral modifications like sleeping at a 30 degree angle, using a wedge, avoiding food or drinks two hours before bedtime, wearing loose fitting clothing is also within our scope. This is important because we wanna help patients prevent the worsening of their symptoms, improve their quality of life, and of course, help them resolve any of the dysphagia or voice symptoms they may have related to GERD. Even if their physician provides the same education and handouts, it's always good to back up that education and make sure they understand not just the diagnosis, but how to move forward. I personally think managing GERD can be so tough because honestly, sometimes a lot of our patients don't wanna change their lifestyle. This is another one of those times to put on your counseling hat and have a conversation with realistic expectations. I know personally, I love coffee, chocolate, and wine, and no, I don't wanna change what I'm doing. But I also understand that not changing my diet can lead to some pretty cruddy health outcomes. I've got a free gift for you over at metaslpcollective.com forward slash reflux. To access it now, head over to metaslpcollective.com forward slash reflux. This link will also be included in the description below this video. I'll see you there.